Hey everyone, I'm so excited. It's story time. All right, I'm gonna make sure that this is working and that you can see me, so just give me a second. And then we will start our stories. Shout out to Miss Adela and Miss Yolanda because I went into their classroom this evening and borrowed some books for our story time. Maybe Penny will join us. So I'm gonna just turn that right there. Hopefully this will be good for our story time. So, all right, so here we are, it's story time. Okay, here's Penny, she's over here. I'm so excited, so it is back to school time. So I have our first book tonight, Berenstein Bears Go Back to School. Penny, all right. Okay. <clears throat> the members of the bear family were sitting around talking about their favorite things. Their favorite colors, the rainbow. Their favorite foods, that they've got pizza and chicken and hot dogs and fish. And their favorite movies and TV shows. After a while, they got to their favorite seasons. What's your favorite season, Papa? Asked Brother. Winter, said Papa. Winter is my favorite season because it's rugged. I like the crunch of the snow beneath my feet, the little clouds your breath makes, the beauty of the snow in the forest. Yes, my favorite season is definitely winter. Tell me, cubs, said Papa, what's your favorite season? Summer, shouted the cubs. It wasn't exactly a big surprise that summer was the cubs' favorite season. Summer with its trips to the old swimming hole, its overnight campouts, and just lying around watching the sky. I bet I know your favorite season, Mama, said Sister. Spring! Well, said Mama, I do like spring. I like the flowers, and spring is the best season for rainbows. But spring isn't my favorite season. My favorite season is fall. Why is that, Mama? asked Brother. Is it because the leaves turn beautiful colors? asked Sister. Is it because October is bright blue weather? asked Brother. No, said Mama. Fall is my favorite season because in the fall it's back to school. School, thought the cubs. They had all but forgotten about school. Their minds flash back to the last day of school many weeks ago. Uh, when their minds flash oops, back sorry. to the last day of school. Ah. Okay. Their minds flash back to the last day of school many weeks ago when they and their friends cheered and shouted, No more pencils, no more books, no more teachers, dirty looks. But soon they would be going back to school and it would be Lots more pencils, lots more books, lots more teachers, dirty looks. Uh-oh. Mama went to the calendar and circled the day they would be going back to school. Her thoughts were different. Her thoughts were about putting her feet up and having a second cup of coffee after the big yellow school bus took the cubs off to school. Perhaps she would catch up on her soap operas. Maybe she would do some shopping at the mall. Wow, this is a little antiquated. I mean, she's an independent woman. She could do whatever she wanted. Those are the things she wanted to do. As back to school day came closer, the cubs began to worry. What if my new teacher is a sourpuss and doesn't like me, said sister. What if I go out for soccer and I don't make the team, said brother. What if the work is too hard and I can't do it, said sister. What if I get in trouble and get sent to the principal, said brother. Now, now, said mama, none of, none of those things is going to happen. You're going to do fine. Mama's right, said papa. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. But the cubs couldn't help worrying. They were still worrying when the bus came and took them off to school. 
Mama sighed as she watched the school bus disappear around the bend. Woods Bear Papa had already left for his work in the forest. Alone at last, thought Mama. She looked around the house. She poured herself a second cup of coffee and looked at the morning paper. The headline said, school starts today. She already knew that. She put on one of her soap operas, but it seemed stupid and boring, and she had lost track of the story. She decided to go shopping at the mall, but by the time she got ready, she had changed her mind and just wasn't in the mood for shopping. Sister's new teacher didn't turn out to be a sourpuss at all, nor was the work too hard. The coach told brother he was a sure starter on the soccer team and he did get sent to the principal, but it wasn't because he was in trouble. It was because he was chosen to be the principal's special messenger. Mama was waiting when the school bus slowed to a stop and let brother and sister off. What was school like? asked Mama. It was like school, said sister. What was the work like? asked Mama. It was like work, said brother. Hey, he said as Mama picked up the cubs and gave them a really big hug. Hey, said sister, we're just getting home from school is all, Mama. Mmm, said brother, I smell fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. The cubs, the cubs ran into the kitchen where the fresh baked chocolate chip cookies and tall glasses of ice cold milk awaited them. Mmm, said sister, these cookies are good. I'm glad you like them, said mama. Well, that was a good book. That was really good. I'm very glad that mama, you know, realized that maybe she did miss her cubs after all. Okay, this one caught my eye when I was in Miss Yolanda's room because the girl who never made mistakes sounds an awful lot like me. Sometimes I think I don't make mistakes, but everybody makes mistakes, right? But sometimes you can get a little too sure of yourself. So I'm excited to see about this girl who never made, a mis made mistakes. So, the girl who never made mistakes. For Beatrice Bottomwell, Friday began like any other. She matched her socks, and of course, she put her shoes on the proper feet. She remembered to feed her hamster, Humbert, his favorite food, broccoli. And when she made a sandwich for her brother Carl's lunch, she used exactly the same amount of peanut butter as jelly. That's pretty awesome. When she stepped outside to greet her fans, she didn't forget to say good morning and thank you. They asked if she'd made her bed. She had. They asked if she forgot to do her math homework. Nope. What about tonight's talent show? They asked. I'm ready, said Beatrice with a smile. After all, her juggling act had won three years in a row. Most people in town didn't even know Beatrice's name. They just called her the girl who never makes mistakes, because for as long as anyone could remember, she never did. Unlike Beatrice, Carl made lots of mistakes. He ate his crayons and drew with, green, with his green beans. He danced with his hands and played the piano with his feet. Carl loved to make mistakes. At school, Beatrice was cooking on a team with her two best friends, Millie and Sarah. To make their giant rhubarb muffins, they needed four eggs. Beatrice went to the refrigerator and carefully chose the biggest, eggiest eggs she could find. But on her way back, her legs slipped out from under her. The eggs went flying and Beatrice was about to make her first mistake. But she didn't. That was close thought Beatrice. Sorry, Beatrice, I dropped a piece of rhubarb. Uh, don't mention it, Millie. She had an egg in her mouth. For the rest of the school day, Beatrice could not stop thinking about her almost mistake. 
On the way home from school, Beatrice watched Millie and Sarah ice skating in the park. Come join us, said Millie. It's fun, said Sarah. Beatrice watched them slip and slide on the frozen pond. Millie and Sarah laughed as they wobbled on the ice. No thanks, said Beatrice. At supper, Beatrice barely touched her food. Is everything all right, kiddo? Asked her father. I'm worried I'll mess up tonight, said Beatrice, and everyone will be watching. Worry? You don't make mistakes, he said with a smile. Beatrice tried to smile, too. After supper, Beatrice got ready for the talent show. First, she woke Humbert from his nap. Next, she got the salt shaker from the kitchen table. Finally, she filled a balloon with water. The school auditorium was packed. Beatrice felt something jumping around, felt her stomach jumping around inside her. Beatrice waited for her juggling music to begin. That's her, that's the girl who never makes mistakes, said a woman. Oh, we know she'll be perfect, said a man. When the music started, she tossed Humber into the air. Next, she added the salt shaker and finally the water balloon. Oh my goodness, Penny really likes this story too. Penny, I'm trying to read this story here. Beatrice didn't miss a beat. The crowd clapped with a delight, but Beatrice noticed something odd about the salt shaker. Specks were the specks were falling out of it were not white. Oh no, ah choo! Okay, Penny, get down. Honey, get down. Oh my goodness, sorry guys. Achoo! <laughs> he is uh, quite a crazy pop, huh? Humbert was so surprised by his sneeze that he grabbed, get down. He grabbed the water balloon with his claws. Kaploozy! Kaplooey! Humbert pieces of water balloon and the pepper rained down on top of Beatrice. For the first time in as long as anyone could remember, Beatrice made a mistake and it was a big one. The music stopped. Beatrice didn't know what to do. Cry? Run off stage? The crowd sat stunned. They couldn't believe that the girl who never made mistakes, mistakes, made a mistake. Oh my goodness. Beatrice looked at Humber. He looked back at her. His hamster fur was soaked and speckled with bits of balloon. Beatrice let out a giggle. The giggle grew into a chuckle and the chuckle became a laugh. The people in the crowd looked at each other and then back at Beatrice. They began to giggle. They began to chuckle and finally roar with laughter. Beatrice and the audience laughed until they couldn't remember why they were laughing. That night, Beatrice slept better than she ever had. In the morning, Beatrice, no fans greeted Beatrice. When she got dressed, Beatrice, for no reason at all, put a polka dot sock on one foot and a plaid sock on the other. Beatrice and Carl made sandwiches. This time, they put peanut butter and jelly on the outside. They called it an inside out PB and J. Lunch was messy and delicious. Later, Beatrice found Millie and Sarah skating in the park. They fell a lot and laughed. Now people no longer call her the girl who never makes mistakes. They just call her Beatrice. That is such a fantastic story. So I guess the moral is, um, it's good to make mistakes. <laughs> All right. So I have one more story for us called Don't Push the Button. And I'm really excited about this one because it looks cool. All right, one more story. Don't push the button. Hi, my name is Larry. Welcome to my book. There's only one rule. Don't push the button. Seriously, don't even think about it. I want to push it. Uh, it does look pretty nice though. I wonder what would happen if we pushed it. Should we try? Should we push it? Nope. 
No, we can't. We mustn't. No one is even looking. You should give the button one little push. All right, let's do it. Ready? Ah, now I'm yellow. Push it again. Push. Eek! Now I'm yellow and polka dot. Push it twice. Eek! Now there's two of me. Push it a bunch of times. Uh-oh. <laughs> Shake the book to get rid of all the extra Larrys. Almost a little more. Uh-oh. Is my did my camera stop? Okay, good. It's still filming. I was a little worried because the the picture changed. <laughs> okay. There we go. It says here to scratch Larry's tummy to get him back to normal. <laughs> That's a lot of tickles. Okay, much better. Let's not push that button again. Um, but that was kind of fun. Maybe just a couple more pushes. The end. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me for story time. That is all I have for you. Um, so tonight we read the Berenstein Bears go back to school. And we learned that Mama, although her favorite time is back to school time, she misses her cubs when they're at school. And also that the Berenstain Bear books were written in the 70s or 80s. Um, and then we learned about Beatrice and the girl who never made mistakes. Um, and we learned that maybe it's better to make mistakes because that's how we learn and that's how we have fun. Uh, she definitely missed out on a lot of fun by not making mistakes. Sometimes great things come out of mistakes. Um, great discoveries are mistakes. And then we had some fun with uh, Don't Push the Button. So, and then obviously some fun with Penny Girl here. So thank you for joining us for story time. Um, have a great night. Bye. Eek.